By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we're going to take a look between a white and a green deck that's piloted by me. I've called it Spider Ganon, it's completely revised. And I'm taking on a deck piloted by Derek and it is a black and red deck. I've called it Trolls Destruction because it's got often Trolls, Navanero's Discs, but it also has Land Destruction. It's got Discard, it's got Him to Turek. And yes, Him to Turek is a card from the Fallen Empires and it is allowed in this match because we are playing old school Atlantic in this one. If you wanna know more about the rules, by the way, because it can get kind of confusing with old school and rules, just check the description below because there I always um, have a little box called Rules Info and you can read about the rule set that we're playing and the specifics of that rule set. For example, this match is played with Mana Burn because we're playing according to the Atlantic rules. Another nice thing about the description is, by the way, now that we're talking about it, uh, it's also the place where you can find timestamps and timestamps can kind of help you navigate through this video. For example, if you wanna go straight to the deck deck of Derek, you can find a Trolls Destruction deck deck, a timestamp, click on there, that will take you straight to the deck deck. And also if you just wanna skip the deck decks and go straight to the action, you can click on the timestamp that's marked MTG Games. So with the timestamp, I'm kind of trying to help you navigate through the video and see the parts of the video that you actually want to see. And hopefully you enjoy the whole video, but I know that some of you really come here just to see the gameplay, so you can go straight to that gameplay action. Um, that's actually all that I want to say here in the introduction. So let's quickly move on to the deck deck, I'm actually gonna start with my deck. It's white, it's green, and I've called it Spider Geddon. Let's take a look. And here we see my deck Spider Geddon. So Spider Geddon has a lot of similarities with Urnum Geddon, but there are a few differences. So maybe first focus on, you know, what does an Urnum Geddon deck want to do? It's quite simple. You wanna ramp up with, you know, Lanora Elves, in this case, Basil Monolith, and then just play out a lot of smaller creatures. You know, I've got a Savannah Lions, I've got Elfish Archers, I've got Giant Spider, I've got Sarah Angel. And once you've got enough creatures on the board or more than your opponent, sometimes one single Savannah Lions is enough, you can cast your arm again and destroy all the lands so your opponent cannot cast any blockers out and you can just keep attacking with your little force, right? That's basically the idea in a nutshell. Now, the cool thing is here, um, I've decided to just build with Revised. I love to do that. It's, you know, it's my alpha. I've got a special connection with the set. And I think Giant Spider kind of got the bad deal in Magic the Gathering because of uh, Urnum Jin. Urnum Jin, of course, a fantastic card. One green and three for a four five from Arabian Nights. But there are a few pluses that Giant Spider has that Urnum Jin doesn't. First off, Giant Spider isn't Arabian Nights, so you cannot destroy it with a bottle. Secondly, Giant Spider is really hard to kill, just like Urnum, by the way, but that four toughness is really difficult to get rid of, and also Giant Spider can block flying creatures. It's ideal against cards like Thunder Spirit or even better, Hypnotic Spectre. It can block those creatures for days. It can kill them. If you've got a, a Giant Strength to put on your Giant Spider, you can actually kill a Sarah Angel. You know, you can kill any 4-4 flyer or 5-5 flyer for that matter, right? So it is a pretty good creature. When you've got two of those on the board, it's even better. So I think Giant Spider is a little bit, I'm gonna say it again, I know I say it a lot, but it's a little bit an underestimated card, but we'll see in this matchup how good Giant Spider really is. Now, another card that I would just like to highlight here because uh, it's made possible due to Giant Spider is Meek Stone. So Meek Stone, I'm playing two main here. Uh, an artifact for one that reads, creatures with power greater than two do not untap. Now, the great thing about this deck is all my creatures have power two or less, and the only creature that's bigger, kind of my top game, my end game, Sarah Angel, I'm playing with three Sarahs, is of course a 4-4 flyer, but you don't have to tap it when it attacks. So it's never gonna tap anyway. So it's perfect in this deck. So Meek Stone, um, I, I should say Giant Spider made it possible for me to play with Meek Stone. If you play with Urnum Jin, of course you're not gonna play with Meek Stone. So I'm also really curious to see how good Meek Stone is in this deck. Another card that I'm really curious about is Basil Monolith. So I chose not to play with Mana Vault in this deck. Mana Vault, of course, a great way to kind of ramp up. Like one to cast, you can tap it, you get three mana back, which is fantastic. Basil Monolith, it costs three, so it's slower. You can tap it for three. But the upside of Basil Monolith is you can just untap it whenever you want if you've got lands available and it doesn't hurt you. Mana Vault, of course, every time it stays tapped, it gonna deal you, it, it's going to deal you a point of damage and you can only untap your Mana Vault in the upkeep before you've actually drawn your card. So you've got to make that decision before you draw. And usually it means untapping the Mana Vault means 
a whole turn is gone, right? You cannot play out anything. So I really think that Basil Monolith could be better. I'm saying could be because this is a new deck. I'm testing it out. Obviously, I'm hoping to play Lana Rare Elves turn one, Basil Monolith turn two, and then maybe turn three, play some small creatures in Armageddon or play a Sarah Angel, and then turn four, play an Armageddon. Those are kind of the scenarios that I'm hoping for. Obviously, because I'm playing with white, I also have those Disenchant, Swords, Balance, that whole removal package. Um, so that's hopefully going to give me enough time if I don't find the, the, the Armageddon in time. I can still kind of deal some damage, get rid of some creatures and rid of some other threats. I guess in the case of, of Derek's deck, I'm going to use those Disenchants, for example, against the uh, the Nevenerals discs. Anyway, uh, this is my deck. This is my strategy. I would love to hear from you in the comments below what you think of this deck. What are some of the changes you would make or do you think it is great as is? So this is my deck. Now let's take a look at the deck of my opponent, Trolls Destruction by Dedek. And here we see the deck of my opponent. So I've called it Trolls Destruction. It's piloted by Derek. And the reason I've called it that is because we do see the Setch Trolls and we see, of course, the Nevenerals Disc. But there's much more destruction than just that, right? We do know the trick of Disc Control. You play your Nevenerals Disc. Then uh, when it untaps, you use the Disc. And of course, Setch Troll has to regenerate. So you regenerate the Troll. So your Troll survives and everything else on the board is basically wiped out, right? So that's kind of the uh, Disc Control deck in a nutshell. Uh, but here we see other strategies as well. For example, we've got three stone rains and one sinkhole. So there is land destruction in this deck next to that, you know, never know disc destruction. We also see four him to Turex. Uh, we see four hypnotic specters and we see a mind twist. So there is a lot of nasty discard in this deck as well. And I must say, I really like the synergy between those discard spells the uh, the two Nevenerals discs and the Animate Deaths. I think Animate Deaths are going to be really good in this matchup because you just keep destroying everything and the graveyards are going to be overflowing with creatures. There are also a few things that I kind of find interesting when I'm looking at this build. And I know that Derek, uh, he told me he just got back into old school. So I think it's super cool, Derek, that, you, that you're back into this. And this looks like a very interesting deck because you're kind of combining multiple decks making it into one deck. And it's usually a good strategy, looking at the quality of decks and putting those decks together. Now, um, what I would probably go for, and you know, feel free to completely disagree with this, is we see those three stone rains. And of course, a nice thing about the stone rain is it's only one red and two, right? So you don't really have to dive deep into a color, where Sinkle is, for example, two black. But in this case, when I'm looking at you know the choices he's made. Him is two black, Hypnotic Spectre is two black, he's got four rituals anyway. So I would probably just play with four sinkholes in this deck and I would just take out the stone rains. That's probably what I would do because black is definitely your your deeper color. And talking about that the main color in this deck is, is black, then I'm looking at that Sheevan Dragon. Sheevan Dragon is beautiful, so I'm super happy that you're playing it, but it is your only two red spell, so you could even consider taking the Shivan out and, for example, play with the Two-Headed Giant. I think Two-Headed Giant is one red and four for a four-four with Trample, which is very unique uh, in uh, in red, and it can block two creatures. Not that blocking really matters, but, I mean, it's a big body, it's five, it's 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 only one red and, and four, so you're not really diving deep into red. So I think those are little, uh, little differences that you could make. Again, feel free to completely disagree here. And uh, like I said, Derek is just starting. So that's probably why you're not seeing any Badlands here yet. You're just seeing two City of Brasses. So it's all kind of cool when you when you start brewing. Your starting point is, okay, what do I still have from when I used to play Magic, right? Which is really a nice point to start with. Play with what you have is sometimes... I know that sometimes I can over-romanticize it, but I think the cool thing about play with what you have is that, you know, your starting point is, okay, let's open my old box of cards and see what I can actually make and think back of what I used to play with. And from there, try to make a deck that's as good as you can make it and also full of fun cards that you love to play because you probably have a connection with the cards. And from that point forward, you know, you can decide, okay, is this really something I love? And am I, for example, going to buy those Badlands? Am I going to dedicate myself to this kind of deck? So maybe it's nice, Derek, if you see this video, if you can let us know in the comments below, what, what are your future plans with Old School Magic? Are you planning to get into some duels, for example, or do you more want to go into perhaps a mono black deck or a mono red deck, which is always kind of interesting. Talking about, I guess we're kind of 
I'm kind of talking about budget here. Um, dual lens are very expensive, right? So usually when you build budget, you start building with a monocolor deck. But I mean, if you think back of the spider getting deck you just saw, Savannah is one of the cheaper dual lens. So if you kind of like white and green, then, you know, Savannah could be a budget option. And I'm saying budget in quotations because I'm talking obviously about budget from an old school standpoint, right? And old school is of course a super expensive format. So I'm looking at it from that point of view. For example, in this deck, a revised fork, I don't know what they go for now, but I do know that the price has recently gone really up for those. So it's, it's, it's hard to talk budget when you talk old school. Anyway, um, like I said, I think it's really cool, Derek, that you brought this, brought this to the table. Your sideboard is also quite interesting with those two chain lightning. So you could start going a little bit more aggressive on um, uh, you know on the direct damage plan if you want to after sideboarding says quite interesting we also see that uh, scary gloom there I hope you're not going to use that against me uh, but anyway this is the deck of Derek we've looked at my deck now let's go to the match game number one here we go and there I am starting Savannah into a Lana Elves perfect start for me so I'm on the play here game number one passing turn here to Derek. And uh, like I said in the introduction, Derek just got back into old school magic. So it's really cool to see uh, an old veteran coming back to the game. And uh, as you can see, there was some glare in that swamp. So we kind of changed the lighting a little bit. It's not the most perfect image, but at least we can see it's a swamp. I actually have quite some glare on my cards as well here. Attacking him with the Lunarer Elves, putting Derek on 19 and playing a Savannah Lines. I must say it feels really good to tap your Savannah and cast the Savannah Lines. It just makes sense. And if, you, if you've read the flavor text of Savannah Lines, it talks a lot that it is the king of the jungle, but it's so good at camouflage that it also feels really at home in the plains. Oh, there we see him to Turek by Derek. That is really good right now at this uh, point in the game. Losing a Basil Monolith and a Forest. I kind of feel lucky here. Could have been much, much worse. And finding a giant spider. So I'm able to put some pressure on. For me, what would be the perfect scenario right now is uh, is actually if I could find uh, an Armageddon next turn. If I could just cast an Armageddon, then this game is maybe already in the bag. Here we see a Hammerheim from Derek. Kind of difficult to see the scores, by the way, on his side. I believe he's on 17 that I've attacked with the Lunar Elves and as a Savannah line, so three damage in total. There we see a Demonic Tutor. I wonder what he's gonna tutor for. I mean, I've only got one card in hand, so a Mind Twist is not really a good option. Um, he could go, of course, for a creature, but a Hypnotic Spectre is not gonna do it because of the, uh, the Giant Spider. I wonder what he's gonna try to dig up. I mean, you know, it also depends uh, of his hand, of course. First, I'm going to attack here, and I'm probably going to deal, yeah, five points of damage, so he's going to drop all the way down to 12, and I'm playing a Basalt Monolith here. So, things are looking pretty good for me. I think if you're Derek, you really need to get rid of some creatures, or just play out, for example, a Cetral would be a great blocker here. And he could play it out and still have a Swamp open to regenerate it if need be. So, let's see, he is playing three Setch Trolls main. I think you could even consider Derek just going with a full playset of such trolls in your deck. They're just a really good creature. And if you're playing uh, black and red, I mean, it's a 3-3 it's a three, three for 3 mana, basically, with regeneration. Which is kind of insane. He's a little bit into tank here. I wonder what's going to happen. He's trying to figure out the best play. Tapping a black. Okay, Dark Ritual, 3 black floating. What does he want to do here? Tapping a red... Tapping another black. Oh, fireball. Another question is, yeah, so he's going to go for my big giant spider. Does that also mean that he's got a hypnotic specter in hand? You know, and that he wants to get rid of the giant spider next turn, plays out a hypnotic specter. He's going to try to discard my cards out of my hand. That could be part of his strategy. Of course, I can at least attack now for three, putting him on nine, I believe. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Attack him for three. Because, you know, he doesn't have enough mana to use his Mitchell's Factory as a blocker. So it's kind of a free attack for me. He's going to take the damage. So I believe he's on... It looks like he went all the way to 8. But I believe he should be on 9, actually, Derek. But 
Maybe I'm mistaken. It's kind of hard to see the life total from here. Perhaps it's a 9. Anyway, he's playing in second mountain. Oh, anime dead. Oh, my giant spider. That's so... F I didn't see that coming. I was really thinking more along the lines of Hypnotic Spectre, maybe Sengir, something like that. This is pretty cool. Actually, the one for giant spider does it for Derek. It kind of stops my attacks and... I'm kind of a little bit unfortunate in the sense that I haven't found a Sarah Angel or an Armageddon. If I would have found an Armageddon earlier in the game, uh, this would have been a sealed deal. I am playing with three Sarah Angels main, so I'm kind of missing my Sarahs. I'm not really understanding why I keep playing out Lance, by the way, because I am the Armageddon player. Okay, here we see the Hypnotic Spectre. So this is kind of the play that I was expecting from Derek, because now he can start, you know, attacking my hand size. Ooh, this is lucky. I believe this was a top deck. Top decking Giant Spider here. Very unlucky for Derek. I feel like he was doing what he had to do. And he was setting himself up quite nicely. But unfortunately for him, I'm finding uh, my Giant Spider. So I can at least block the Hypnotic Spectre. There we see him to Turek for my last card. Ooh, a balance. Okay, I don't understand why I didn't play out the balance the other turn, because I've got one creature more, yes, but that would mean I would lose a Lanoir Elves, and my opponent Derek would lose his entire hand, so those two cards and those him would be gone, and he would lose a land, so I'm kind of sloppy, I feel like I've missed it, it happens of course in Magic you make mistakes, but I feel I've made a mistake here, should have played that balance the turn before, I mean not a super big deal, but you know... I could have just emptied Derek's hand here. He's playing a strip mine, by the way. I wonder what that two cards in his hand are, actually. And passing turn here, it seems, or not? Yeah, I'm passing turn. Okay. Looks like I'm a little bit into tank. What am I going to do? This is, of course, a difficult situation. Attacking with both, so perhaps I've got a giant growth in hand. I'm pretty sure if you're Derek, you're kind of expecting something to happen. Maybe I've got a disenchant in hand. I want to force him to use the factory because he's going to animate the factory. It's now 2-2. He blocks the, yeah, of course, the Savannah lines on the giant spider. That makes sense. And before damage is dealt, I actually want to do something here. So we can see that Derek's already tapping the red, indicating that he's got a lightning bolt. And I'm actually saying, like, I want to do something before damage is dealt so I can kill the Mishra's Factory before damage is dealt, then of course he can tap it in response to gain three life. And I'm gonna lose my Savannah Lions here, but I'm not gonna lose my Giant Spider. If I would have waited for the damage step to come first, then my Giant Spider would have been dead with that bolt, assuming he's got a bolt. I mean, maybe he wanted to play something else, but considering it was red and he just tapped the mountain, it's probably a bolt. That's the, like the, the thing with combat, there are so many steps, so that's why I like to attack with a Swords in hand, just wait until he declares blockers, and before damage is dealt, I can make my decision with a Giant Grove or a Swords to Plowshares. There's the attack, by the way, uh, with the Hypnotic Spectre, so I'm going to drop to 18, and I have to discard a land here, playing a Disenchant, probably exactly, and now I've kind of opened up the field for 4 points of damage, so he's going to go back to 9, I believe. Or is it 8? It's kind of difficult to uh, to read the life score. I believe it's 8. And, oh, again, an anime death. The giant spider just doesn't want to die. Or, well, it dies, but it keeps coming back from the dead. It's an uber zombie giant spider. I actually think that's kind of a little bit of a flow. Oh, again, a disenchant, killing the spider again. Um, I pro Yeah, I'm probably just going to attack with my giant spider now. And he's just going to take the damage, I assume. Or does he want to chump with the Hypnotic Spectre here? Does he? He does, and he still has that bolt, of course. So that's a two for one. I do understand this play by Derek. He's a little bit with his back against the wall. He's on eight life here. And he's on top decking mode, just like me. Playing a land. Oh, actually, he's not on. He still has got two cards in hand there. I wonder what those two cards are. So he's on six now, double Lanawar Elves for the attack. I've got one card in hand and passing turn. Maybe it's another him? I guess not because he's passing turn again. Two cards in hand and gonna attack again. 
Playing a giant grove. Okay, so I'm going to deal five points of damage. Does he have a bolt here to respawn? That's a big question. It looks like he doesn't. He's on one life. Game number one, best of three, drawing into a swamp. I'm going to untap and I'm going to finish it here. So that's it. Game number one is for Spider Geddon. And look at that hand. Okay, so he's had... What's in that hand? It looks like a Mind Twist, a Dark Ritual, and that other card, I couldn't really see what it was, but apparently it was of no use here for Derek. So, game number one, going to the uh, Spider get a deck, and now we're going to go into our sideboards, and we'll catch back up with you in game uh, number two. Game number two, here we go. So, it's one up for me, and of course, Derek then on the play, starting with a Mountain. And uh, a pass here. So we've got quite a lot of glare also from my part, actually. Uh, could have done a little bit of a better job. Yeah, now this is better. I guess my camera needed a moment. So Savannah into Savannah lines. And there's a chain lightning coming from the sideboard here, taking care of that uh, Savannah lines. There is a forest. Oh, Elvish Archers. Beautiful art by Ansematics. 2 1 first strike. Pretty nice creature, not so good against the set trolls, although we haven't seen a single set troll in that game one. That game one did take a long time. Look at this, it looks like Derek cannot find any black sources. That's a really bad start, I guess, for my opponent. And finding another Savannah, gonna attack for two here, it seems. Gonna put him on 18. Okay, changing my mind. Okay, it looks like it looks like Derek wants to change the lighting a little bit. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay, now I'm attacking. I was like, why would I change my mind? Why would I not attack? Playing Basil Monolith, second main, and passing turn. And look at that. He cannot find black. He's stuck. Man, it's really bad, Derek, that you're stuck. It looks like I'm a little bit in the tank. Am I thinking about casting an Armageddon here? Why would I? I am going to cast Armageddon. I'm also tapping the other lands, by the way. So I've got some mana floating. So it looks like we're kind of discussing that. I've got some mana floating, and I'm probably going to use those to play more creatures. So a giant grove on my archer. So I'm going to attack for five here, and I've got this Savannah Lines. So taking care of all the lands of Dark, he is finding... A swamp here into a dark ritual. Ooh, that is really good for Derek. At least he's got something on the board. And with the hypnotic specter, he can start discarding my hand. And of course, I am attacking here. Let's see what Derek is going to do. Is he going to block with the hypnotic specter? I mean, all that I've got going for me is kind of the pressure. He is trading here. That is a little bit surprising. I think I would have probably taken the damage and go for discard. On the other hand, he's quite low already. He's on 11 right now. I'm not finding any lands. I've got that Basil Monolith tapped. But also Derek is not finding any lands. I can attack now with the Archer. Going to put him on 9. Is this going to be a 2-0 victory for me? That is the question. Okay, Derek finding another Swamp. Will we see him here? Or something else. Like he needs to put up a blocker for the Archer. On the other hand, he's on 9. So he still has 5 turns to go. It's not too bad. There we see a Demonic Tutor. Now I wonder, is he going to tutor for another land? If he is, he's got to wait a whole turn because he's played his land for turn already. But it could be an interesting choice. Remember, he is playing with three set trolls and four if not expectors. So just with one extra mana, it might open up quite a lot for him. Um, you know, a red source could also mean that he can play out a Lightning Bolt, for example, on the Archers. So... Yeah, maybe just looking for a land is, is not really a, a, a silly thing to do here in this scenario. So he's passing turn. I think he's gone for a land. So I'm going to attack him. I'm not finding any mana, by the way. Man, was that Armageddon a mistake on my part? Derek here playing the mountain. Tapping three. Yeah, there's the set troll. So it's a three, three for one black. You can regenerate it. And that kind of means it stops for me. Finally, I'm finding a land here. A forest. Casting a Lanawer Elves and passing turn. I mean, I've got four cards at hand. That's quite a lot, but I just don't have any mana to play them out. At least now I've got a Forest, and the next turn I can use my Lanawer as well. So I've got two green, I guess. But I really want to kind of find white and hopefully play a Swords on the Troll and start attacking Derek again. I mean, Derek's on 7 right now. Okay, finding a planes, finding a sword. So he's going to go up to 10. And 
There's a soul ring. Wow. Finding lots of mana right now. Basil Monolith attacking Derek. He's going to drop to eight. If I can find perhaps a second white and cast a Sarah Angel, that would really seal the deal here. There is, it looks like a Maze of If on the side of Derek. That's actually quite nice. There's a Nevenerals Disc. That is really good. Do I have a Disenchant to stop? I do. I've got a Disenchant here to stop the Nevenerals Disc. Nevenerals Disc would have been great for Derek to kind of get back into this. Attack is going to send back the Archer. He's going to take a damage. going to drop to 7. I mean, I'm close, but I'm not there. And I've only got one card in hand. I kind of feel like Derek's stabilizing here. Drawing card number three. If it can just deal with one of the two creatures, for example, by playing a blocker, um, you know, he's pretty much back into this. Remember, I'm not playing with any direct damage. I'm playing with, with white and with green. Oh, there's a him losing his swords. That's really valuable. I think this is a good play from Derek to, you know, first play out that him, forcing me to discard that swords and then playing this anime dead. So he's going to go for the Hypnotic Spectre. So that's now a 1-2. And that means he can start like kind of, you know, controlling my hand. And also using it as a blocker, of course, because it's got two toughness. So he can send the, with the Elvish Archer, he can use the Maze on that. And he can block the Lanowar, so I'm not going to attack here. And there's a Sengir Vampire. That is a big problem for me. I mean, I've got quite a lot of um, swords in the bin already. I really just need to find one of my three Sarah Angels here so I can just block the Sengir. But I'm not finding any passing turn. It's looking really bad for me all of a sudden. I mean, I'm still on, on 19. It's not, I'm not going to die anytime soon, but still. There's a Sextral, even more strong creatures on the side of Derek, attacking me for 5, dropping to 14. So all of a sudden, I'm on a 3-turn clock here. I've got no flyers. Okay, at least Giant Spider can stop the Hippie. But, I mean, I really don't want to chump the Giant Spider here for the Sengir. That's really not a good deal for me. And he's playing another Hypnotic Spectre. Attacking with the Sengir. Going to take the 4, going to go to 10. This is a problem. Untapping. Ooh, finding a forest. I don't need a forest right now. I need a Swords. I need a Sarah. I need Giant Growth on the Giant Spider. I need something. What can I do here? There is... Oh... Is that a terror? That's a terror. I mean, it's a little bit hard to see, but that was a terror taking even more damage. Dropping to three. Remember, there was a point in this game where Derek was on 20 and I was, or Derek was on seven and I was on 20. This is kind of a last resort attack, sending back the archer, blocking the Lanawer, playing another archer passing turn. I always like an alpha strike, by the way. But it looks like, Derek, you're going to win this one. And that means it's going to be a 1-1. One -one. There's the swing. That is the end of it. I am dead. So that means game number two is going to Derek. It is 1-1. One, one, and that means one really, really cool thing. We're going to a game three. Game number three. The all deciding a game. Who's going to win this match? Is it going to be me with spider Geddon Or my opponent, Derek, who's playing Trolls Destruction? Oh, man. Really, really close games. I'm really enjoying this. Ooh, look at that. Derek is taking a mulligan, though. So that is kind of tough for him. So he's going to go down a card. I'm on the play. Looks like I don't have a turn one play though. So I was a little bit eager to start there. Usually you kind of wait and you say, I'm going to keep my hand or you're going to keep your hand. But it's all good. And um, like I said earlier um, in this video, I'm just really happy to see people coming back into magic. I think it's really cool. We've all had our periods where we played less magic. Um, oh, by the way, he's taking another mulligan here. I remember we were discussing this. He had no lands in hand, so I said, you know, just take a, a free mulligan. You know, it's kind of makes no sense to go all the way down to five. And that's also something that you can actually um, agree upon before the play. I'm kind of call, call it gentleman's mulligans. When you have only lands, you can take a free one or only uh, a no lands, you can take a free one. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, he's taking uh, a one mulligan then, so he's going down to six. 
is going to play a City of Brass and a Pass Turn. So I'm finding a Forest. Okay, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm finding a Savannah instead, and I am playing out an Elvish Archer. Now, this is actually quite interesting here, because usually I would play out my Forest, because what if my opponent Derek has land destruction? He can take my dual land out, and I don't want that. But because the re the fact that Derek is playing with him to Turek, I decided otherwise, and I decided, no, I'm going to play out the, du the dual land, because I'm more afraid of losing it due to a discard spell. And that's exactly what's happening here. Derek is playing with him to Turek. Picking up two cards, losing a Giant Spider and a Disenchant. That is a pretty good hint to Turek here. And I'm attacking for two. So again, I'm kind of the aggressor in this game, finding a Basalt Monolith. I wonder if I can finally find a Sarah Angel. It seems to be really, really good against Derek's deck with the Hypnotic Specters and the Set Trolls. I can fly over the Set Trolls and I can kill the Hippies with it. But of course, I have to find it. There is another one. Oh, no! There goes my Sarah Angel and my sword, so a double him to Turek. So even though, you know, Derek started with card disadvantage because of the mole, he did find lots of hymns, and now this is really bad for me. Just top decking at the moment. And yeah, it's just really bad news. Elvish Archer's also gone, and look at that, playing an Armageddon. Taking care of all the lands, kind of thinking, you know... I've got one card in hand, Derek's got two cards, but my reasoning here is I've got a deck build around Armageddon, so I will probably get bounced back from this quicker than Derek. Um, I guess I was wrong, because look at the lands on the side of Derek, finding a mountain, finding a Mishra's factory. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's looking pretty bad, but, I, you know, let me know what you think of my train of thought here. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, I've got the Armageddon deck. So probably it's worse for my opponent to have no lands than it is for me. Finding uh, an, a Plains here, it seems, and playing a Savannah Alliance. So that's actually pretty good, because that means that Derek can no longer attack with his factory here. It looks like we're both on 18, by the way. And a passing turn here. So just trying to find more lands. Look at Derek go here. This kind of reminds me of that other Armageddon game where he seemed to bounce back better from the Armageddon than I did. I am attacking right now, but there's a bolt. So kind of indicating to Derek, you know, I've probably got something like a Disenchant or maybe Giant Growth in hand. Looks like I'm a little bit in the tank here. Don't know what to do. I guess I'm just passing turn. If I've got a Disenchant or a Swords, I wonder if I'm going to use it on the factory. Ooh, tapping five, Sengir Vampire. That is a problem. Sengir is also the creature that killed me in game number two. There is a Savannah Alliance. That's not going to help me. I mean, it's it's better than nothing, but it's not good enough. I'm just so low on mana. You know, look at the amount of lands of Derek. And look at my land count. It's horrible. That Armageddon really helped Derek more than it helped me. You know, it's it's, it's a risk you take. And I'm expecting him to attack for four here with the Sengir. First he's going to play a Hippie, then he's going to attack for four. So he's going to put me down on 14. Now remember, I cannot block any Flyers. He's going to hit me for six. Attacking him here, he's actually going to take the damage. And I think it's a mistake to attack here. Obviously, I'm hoping for, for Derek to kind of animate his factory, but... I guess I've got a disenchant or something, but why not just, you know, keep my lines on blocking duty? Those two extra points of damage are not going to change much. I'm a little bit in the tank here. Okay, I'm playing... Ooh, this is actually pretty good. Playing a meek stone. And that means that the Sengir actually cannot untap Derek exactly because of the meek stone. So it's kind of like locked up. And this is perfect. The only problem here is that Hippie is going to attack with the Hippie and I'm going to take the damage, which is not horrible. But the big problem here is there's a sinkhole on the planes. Oh no, that's really bad. It's going to hit me for four, but the biggest problem is I'm going to lose another card. Oh man. Oh no, that's a balance. Balance would have been so good. Oh, balance could have taken care of a lot of lands. Oh, man. I feel like if I would have cha chosen different lines of play here, it, it could have been my game. 
And now I feel it's really gonna going to be Derek's game because he's going to attack and again he's going to take a card out of my hand. Hippies are just so brutal, losing a disenchant here. And I so wanted to play the disenchant on the uh, on the factory, but I just didn't get a chance. Derek wasn't wasn't animating it, which is a good decision. Okay, so there's a regrowth. Am I going to get back? I mean, I could play a balance here. Exactly. Playing a balance. This is this is pretty good. I mean, I'm taking care of a hippie. I'm taking care of some lance. I'm taking care of his hand. So, I mean, it's something. And yes, he still has a hypnotic specter left. So it's not perfect. But it's a really good deal pointing out to my lance right now. So the question here is for Derek, is he going to keep his Mishra's factory? I think that's kind of the hard decision here, you know. Um, and he is actually doing it. He's going to keep it and he's going to keep a mountain. And of course, that mountain is important for when he draws into, you know, lightning bolts, chain lightnings. Remember, he, he put the chain lightnings in after sideboarding. So he's going to put me on six here and pass turn. And I'm finding an archer. The problem here is, again, you know, I think it's a good decision for him to keep that factory because that, that can be a 3-3 three, three blocker. So I'm on four now, only two turns away from a loss against Derek. Again, nothing. No giant spider, nothing. There's a soul ring. He's going to attack. And oh, it sorts to plowshares. I'm living. Fight to live another day. And... uh can I? I'm attacking, so I guess I've got a disenchant in hand here. And he's actually going to take the damage. He's going to drop to, is that 12? I believe he's going to drop to 12. Does he have something to make me discard that last card in hand? That would be pretty brutal. Does he have a him? Ooh, he's got a mind twist. Oh man, this card is just so brutal to play against. And uh, I guess he's just going to attack me now for two. He's not. Okay, that kind of surprises me. He could have put me on two here. That means I would have been in bolt range or chain lightning range, however you want to call it. Remember, he's also playing a fireball. And it looks like I'm taking something back here anyway. I'm passing turn. That went a little bit too fast, but I guess I'm just passing turn. I don't want to attack and, and, and you know, get blocked by that uh, Mishra's Factory and lose a creature. Playing another Meek Stone here. I guess I could have kept that in hand. Just to kind of pretend like I have something and kind of force another discard spell out of Derek's hand. And also remember, him is random. So if you've got more cards that aren't really good, um, you know, you kind of can protect your good cards in your hand with that. So that's something else. So there is a swamp from Derek. So Derek's really finding the lands. But I guess right now he wants to find a flyer. A flyer would be perfect for him. Or maybe just direct damage. I mean, he could play a fireball for four. Kill me. Tapping, tapping. Okay, what are we going to see here? There's a fireball. I guess this is end game, or is it? What is he going to... Oh, he's actually going to kill my creature. I like that, Derek. That style, man. He's going to kill my creature. He's going to attack me for two. That is kind of nice. So he's giving me a fighting chance. And actually, I'm finding a lot of rails. So I could at least chump the factory. Let's see. What can he do here? He's going to find a Nevenerals disc. He's going to attack. I got a chump here. And a pass turn. Finding a... No, of course, keeping the disenchant in hand. That's kind of stupid. <laughs> and now Derek knows I've got a disenchant. I was like, I, I went on to autoplay it on the disc. And I was like, oh, no, I shouldn't. And I mean, he's still attacking just to get it out of my hand, I guess. And there's a pass. So, I mean, if Derek finds a bolt, it's over, right? I mean, that's it. Oh, Wheel of Fortune. Why didn't I play out the giant spider? Because of the disc, maybe? That's kind of stupid. Anyway, okay, so drawing seven. And yeah, there's a bolt. Of course, he's got, you know, if he's going to draw a whole hand, he's going to find some direct damage. Look at my hand, by the way. That was bad. Only mana sources and a Lunar Elves. Anyway, congratulations, Derek. 
for winning this match. Well done. Wow, what a what an interesting match. Those Armageddon's completely backfired on me, but it's really cool, Derek, to see your deck work, to see you win. Welcome back to old school. And the coolest thing is your journey is just starting. I mean, your deck is already cool, but there are so many things you can improve here. Of course, you can get more duels. You can get two City of Brasses. You can try to figure out what, what you want to do with your deck, what direction you want to go. Uh, and I have to say, it was great fun to meet you and to play against you. It was just a, a great match, a very exciting match. One to two are always my favorite uh, matches. And uh, I would also like to thank the audience for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you are new to the channel, welcome. I'm happy to see that you found us. Please consider to subscribe and ring that bell. So all that really helps. And uh, there are actually three things you can do to help the channel further. The first step is to like this video. That really helps. Leaving a comment helps. And also sharing this video on your social. So those are three small things you can do. They're maybe really small for you, but really a big deal for me as a content creator. You're showing YouTube that you like what I make and you help me grow the channel. Talking about helping me out, you can also become a patron on Patreon. And uh, that actually works really, really simple. There's an info card appearing right now. If you click on that info card, that will take you straight to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And there you can already support the channel starting with just $1 a month. And the cool thing is, if you become a, a channel patron, um, you also get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. We can play a game of magic if you want. And you can also join the Timmy Talks events that I organized to thank the channel members and patrons for all their support. So if you like that kind of stuff, have a look on the Patreon page. Maybe it's something for you. If it, if not, not, but you know, maybe you like it. Have a look, see if, see if you like it. Talking about having a look, your name will also be in the end scroll at the end of every video, including this one. So quickly, let's go to the end scroll and have a look at our fantastic, amazing, wunderbar patrons and channel members. Here we go. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ich kann das Finger zu Samba gesehen.